Tom here from Orange Systems, and we're going to talk about Screen Connect, or also known as ConnectWise Control. So this is a tool we've been using for a number of years. I've done a review on it. We really like the product. It's pretty solid, but it was purchased by ConnectWise, and we've continued to use it after its purchase. Where the issue comes in is the security. Now, security is said by many people, and anyone who works in the industry understands this good. Security is a team sport. We're all on the same team. There are security researchers poking at products, and they properly go through the process to disclose those vulnerabilities. And that is the case that happened with Bishop Fox. Bishop Fox said there's been a lot of attacks against MSPs. Let's dig deeper into their software and take a look at it and see if there's a flaw in the software that's being exploited. Because unfortunately, one, there's not a ton of information. Two, we don't always know exactly how the bad actors got in and took over some of the MSP software. MSP software is an excellent target because, well, our software has control to many, many things. Therefore, if you take control over the MSP's tools, it makes deploying this different malware or whatever the goal of the threat actor is very easy. These same tools that make it easy for me to patch a thousand machines makes it really easy to do something else like deploy bad tools on a thousand machines as well. And that has been the case many, many times over. I've talked about it on my channel a few times. But when Bishop Fox reached out to ConnectWise Control, the word litigation came up. That is where the problem is. And so the way the story broke was ConnectWise Control, MSP security vulnerabilities are severe, um, according to Bishop Fox. And there's a few cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. I'm going to leave links to all these too so you can read through. There's an advisory summary. There's a lot of details, what version they tested. And then to go a step further, our friends over at Hentress Labs here uh, worked with CRN and also with ConnectWise validating these claims that Bishop Fox made, the security research company. And, you know, right here, validating Bishop Fox's top-notch research. They flat out said this was some top-notch research. This is... Contrast Labs is well respected. Bishop Fox is respected. The problem really came into the way ConnectWise responded to this. And I didn't find out from an email from ConnectWise. I'm a paid licensed user of their software. And my notifications were, oh, wow, look, a news article about the tools I use having a flaw. And I'll even go a step further and share the output of their uh, ConnectWise control update list. Nowhere in their update list does it even tell me when they fixed these vulnerabilities. Now, the good thing is they've been fixed and we keep our systems up to date and patch, but I never got a notification of any of this. That is very bothersome to me and I'm really hoping ConnectWise does better. Now, the good news is they have responded and we do have a entire letter, I'm leave a link to this as well, from the ConnectWise CEO saying that they're going to do better, saying that they're going to uh, solve these problems. Well, they've solved the vulnerabilities, we're going to solve the way they handle it. Um, so I hear them saying it, and this is going to come down to we're going to have to see them doing it. I think more and more of these companies that are uh, in the space of providing tooling for MSPs are just going to have to kind of look at the bigger marketplace. They are maybe old school thinking. I'm not sure exactly what causes them to behave the way they do. The fact that they say things like litigation when a security researcher is doing a vulnerability disclosure to them through proper channels. The problem is if they don't behave, so to speak, if they keep treating security researchers like also bad guys, you're going to find someone just dropping zero days for the ha-has. They're going to do it for the lulls. They're just going to go, look at this. You guys wouldn't follow me. I'm going to drop it. This has been done when other people have not been listened to in a security world. It's not something that should happen. It does happen and when companies have an immature security process in terms of how they handle it. Um, and this is more of a management problem than a coding problem. This is not the technicians, the fingers on the keyboard. This is the management not understanding things, maybe an old way of thinking, because in the early days of the hacking community, this was a common problem of, do we disclose a vulnerability? Will we get sued for doing it? Will we end up in litigation or will we have a federal agency knock on our door? Because even in the earlier days of Microsoft, this was something that occurred. They would not close the vulnerability. They would threaten against, threaten legal action against the security people trying to, you know, share this knowledge with them in a proper disclosure. So my concern is the fact that, one, I never got an email on any of this. I never got a notification, even though I'm paid up to date, you know, with my license and everything. I'm, I'm on their mailing list. I get other notifications for things. Um, 
and it's not in the output stream, so I'm not sure when the problem happened or when it was fixed, but I did do some digging, and because we run the self-hosted version and we have the cross-site uh, disabled for the way we do it in a self-hosted with a reverse proxy and the encryption, um, it appears that we weren't affected by this because of that. The policies we have that stop the cross-site scripting from working means it was never a threat for the self-hosted, provided you had a reverse proxy, provided you had a reverse proxy and had that enabled so your mods uh, in Apache were set up to avoid that particular setting anywhere. So fine on all that. But I'm really hoping for a better response in the future. This is not enough uh, for those that may be asking me this, and actually a few people messaged me on this thing. What are you going to switch to now that they had a problem? The problem is every company is going to have a problem. The more popular it is, the more likely people are going to poke at it. So just using some other company because they haven't had a vulnerability doesn't mean it's not secure. It's about have companies really taken the time to dig in and look at those products. Validation is really hard for security. Uh, going through these uh, public audits, so to speak, uh, are really a good thing because this is all, you know, Bishop Fox made all this uh, public. I'm hoping they get on a solid bug bounty program like they said they're going to in the CEO letter. These are all things I hope to go forward. Uh, but I'm going to keep in, keep watching this because I don't like finding out that a tool I use in the news, I want to be, hey, here's your newsletter, here's your, you should read this, it's not a marketing thing, you should make sure you're up to date, make sure you patch, because there are companies that, the only reason we get all the latest patches, and there's companies that don't do this, they don't renew their license. We keep our license renewed, but we've talked to other MSPs who don't, and they're like, well, it ain't broke, don't fix it, is some of the attitude, which I don't believe in at all. Uh, by the way, if you're an MSP and you haven't updated to the latest version and you're using self-hosted, stop right now and update. There are security fixes in here, despite them not being in the output, and I'm hoping that's what this comes out to, is letting those people know. And it's not a sales tactic. It's a real thing. Like, hey, uh, you're running version 19.3. It has a couple flaws in it. You should be on 19.6, which is current here in January of 2020. So we'll wait and see is my opinion. It's not enough for me to go, I'm trashing the product and moving on. Uh, but obviously, ConnectWise uh, is going to have to mature a bit in their security response handling of things. And we've seen the letter from the CEO. We Hopefully, they're going to be doing this. But yeah, and I will mention real quick, uh, someone may ask about this. There is a flaw was also found in the MSP tooling that is Enable, which is a SolarWinds product. We do, and I've mentioned on the channel before, we use SolarWinds. We don't use this particular, the NCentral slash Enable tool. Uh, but I will leave a link to this if you want to read about what happened. In SolarWinds response, uh, there's big pieces missing for how this all went down because somehow the zero day got dropped on packet storm instead of going through responsible disclosure. And I don't know the why, and neither does Huntress, who also researched this and validated the findings. Uh, but SolarWinds did respond swiftly uh, to this, first disabling the plugin altogether, and then later uh, diving into mitigation process for it. Um, additionally, there was a screenshot highlighting how a hacker might find vulnerabilities using Shodan. For those not familiar with Shodan service, check out uh, this awesome TradeCap Tuesday episode with Tom Lawrence. And um, yeah, I did. we did talk about this a little bit when I was down there. I've, I've actually spent time with the folks at Hunter's Labs and uh, things like that. So there, So for any wonder, are you, are you a bias towards Hunter's Labs or anything like that? I, I, I like them. They do great security research. I've hung out with them and got to see firsthand uh, some of the quality work they do. So at least I'll make sure I'm always open about whatever I'm doing and uh, people that are my friends in the industry. And I like the ConnectWise people. I spent some time with them. I've, I've met some of the Screen Connect people uh, years ago before they were ConnectWise at some events. I think they're good people. I think they're really committed to creating secure code. I just hope the management over at ConnectWise uh, follows up with this and puts a good bug vulnerability program together, maybe a bug bounty program, maybe signs up with Hacker HackerOne. Um, we've seen the letter, now we got to see the action. That's my thoughts on this. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.